All right, so um, <clears throat> my name is Balaji Srinivasan. I'm the former CTO of Coinbase, former general partner at Andreessen, author of a book called The Network State at thenetworkstate.com. Um, and I've got some slides for you today. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about how I think uh, network states and the concept of being to start not just new companies and new currencies, but new communities, cities, and even countries is now what I call possible, preferable, and profitable. So we start new currencies. Can we start new countries? Uh, as I mentioned, I wrote this book at thenetworkstate.com. And we founded this thing called the Network School and NS.com to kind of put these theories into practice. <clears throat> and so the premise is starting new countries is actually possible, preferable, and profitable. Why did I say possible? Let's start there, because that's the part that people argue with me about. So are new countries even possible? And we know that, for example, Google was started within a garage within our lifetime. Facebook was started from a dorm room within our lifetime. Bitcoin was started from a white paper within our lifetime. So new companies, communities, currencies have all been started in this way. Could we start new countries? And this is actually a visual of what a network state looks like. It is a physical social network, so say a social network that takes physical form around the world. Just like you'd print out a document online in, in a piece of paper, or you print out an Uber to your front door, or an Amazon cart to your front door, can we print out these online communities of gigantic scale into the physical world? And I think we can, and this is what a one million person network state looks like, a physical social network with crowdfunded nodes all around the world. It's as if you had all the Chinatowns of the world networked together, okay? So you take all these different communities, and now with remote work and VR and telepresence and cryptocurrency and so on and so forth, we can make them much more seamlessly interoperate. Just like Indonesia is a country with all of its islands separated by ocean, imagine a country with all of its islands separated by internet, but they're just linked together, right? Okay, so that's the idea of a network state. How do we get to a million though? So you can start with just one person on an island, in this case, like the Satoshi of network state, like Zuck, and he has 17 and then 172, then 1,729, and the buildings start to get of larger and larger scale. You can crowdfund larger buildings, apartment complexes, things like this. Then you get to 17,000, 170,000, and eventually 1.729 million. And so that's actually, you could actually go from one to one million in this way. And why does one million put us within country range? So actually, I'll give you three facts. Most countries are actually small countries. Most countries are not like Russia, China, America. Most countries actually have less than 10 million people. And moreover, UN membership has actually grown over time. It's almost quadrupled over the last 70 years, from about 50-something UN members to almost 200, okay? And the third point is that cryptocurrencies now rank with fiat currencies. There's a fun website called fiatmarketcap.com, and it actually shows that Bitcoin ranks with the Turkish lira and the Chilean peso at the time of this screenshot. And so we know that cloud currencies can rank with land currencies. So could crypto countries rank with fiat countries? Could we have a table like this where we have a network state where it's got a population comparable to that of Latvia or Bahrain, but it's just global and decentralized rather than in one place, just like Bitcoin's a decentralized currency, a network state would be a decentralized country. And that's how that dashboard actually materialized in physical form, right, on the dashboard. Now, with sufficient traction, if you can build something of this scale, you can potentially get diplomatic recognition. And the reason I think this is the case is with, for example, Tuvalu, right? It was actually able to give the .tv domain, or TLD rather, to GoDaddy. You had uh, the, the state of Nevada do a deal with Tesla for the Geiger factory. You had um, El Salvador adopt Bitcoin as its national currency. And so the land is already doing deals with the cloud. Okay, so it's already happening, so it's not that unreasonable to think that a crypto community and a fiat community could do a deal together for mutual benefit, whether it's a special economic zone or simply like one of these tech parks that we've got. Uh, I think we could do very well here. Neom and other projects like it actually have lots of space and they've got a lot of top-down support and there's a lot of that's being built there. This could bring a bottom-up community there from around the world, similar to how Dubai brought people from around the world. You could bring them and populate them. Okay, so now why is it preferable? So briefly, um, there's lots of states that are unfortunately failing around the world, riots and all kinds of things. So for poor people in failed states, this gives them an alternative. But then the power user also has an alternative because we've had the frontier mindset since the beginning of humanity, pushing out of Africa, going to America, going to the moon. And so this is actually the same as a crypto coalition, which is both some people are trying to hang onto a bank account and others redefining what a bank account even is in the same way you kind of go from some people just trying to hang on to a functional state and others reinventing the state for the internet era. 
Then finally, why is it profitable? So this comes last but not least. Economic feasibility is also a form of feasibility. So this is a fun graphic that actually puts nation states, social networks, and network states on the same chart, with the x-axis being the population, the y-axis being the annual revenue. So down in the lower right corner there, those are the social networks like uh, Meta, WeChat, TikTok, and so on and so forth, that billions of users. The, the x-axis is a log scale. And these make on the order of tens of dollars per person per year. So if you have 3 billion users, $30 per person per year, $90 billion a year, not bad. Okay. Over here are the small nation states, and these have like 1 to 5 million population, but they have 10,000 something dollars per person per year in terms of annual income. Here are the two global superpowers, and they have large populations and large annual income. And so it's kind of satisfying that they're sort of Pareto optimal on this chart. Okay. And then over here would be the emerging network societies, network states, where they start at on the one to five million range, and they have a few thousand dollars per year in terms of revenue, sort of like a SaaS subscription. But they can go up. They can go upwards in revenue because they can take over all housing and other things, and they can go upwards in, in population as well. Okay, so it's a new way of thinking about tech. It's more vertical rather than horizontal. Rather than get a billion users and monetize them at ten dollars per person, you have a million users and you're monetizing them at ten thousand dollars per person per year. Okay, totally new model of how to think about things. I call it the new SaaS, society as a service. Okay, I think it's funny. All right, so that's why I think starting new countries is possible, preferable, and profitable. And so then, you know, how do we make this practical? And basically, the way we do this, pop-ups are the new startups, okay? Shown here are six different examples of Claude, Anthropic, um, there's, uh, there's uh, Coinbase with Basecamp, there's Zcash, there's Ethereum. They're all holding these pop-ups around the world. And from those pop-ups, we can create permanence. So this is the Tesla Diner, this is our own network school, this is SpaceX Tarbase, and this is the new Solana economic zone that opened up in Kazakhstan. And so these pop-ups, where the internet takes physical form, pop-ups as new startups become permanence and put down roots, and this is how we can actually go and have a physical form for these online networks. Finally, the last step is permanence work with governments. So we go and you know, we, we bring these cloud communities to places like Neom, to, to uh, startup cities or to tech parks, smart cities around the world, which have wanted population, so we can work with pro-tech governments to strengthen their local communities and also to bring economic prosperity. So this is how the cloud can work with the land. So that's the idea, and that's why new societies are possible, preferable, profitable, and now practical. So thank you very much. <laughs>